Good evening, Red, and welcome to Live at Bird TV. So after today's listening to Andy Robb this morning and on Talk Sport that I listen to every day, it's nice to hear them little inklings and feelings that I've been getting over the last four, five, six weeks. I just have this inner belief, I really do, that we can we, that we can win the Premier League next season. And I think the bookies are starting to lean a little bit towards Liverpool as well because not winning the league, the bookies, but they made us today joint, not joint favourites, but second favourites behind Man City. And the guy that runs Coral's betting uh, agency, he came on live on Talk Sport, and his reasons were why Liverpool were second favourites at eight to one, which is what I've backed for twenty pounds, giving me one hundred and eighty quid back. Uh, his reasons were: if you look at the form coming out of last season, the only team that matched Manchester City for form was Liverpool. So. The bookies are looking at Liverpool's form tail that will last last ten to twelve games, uh, and going into this season. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you my reasons as to why I think Liverpool can mount a serious title challenge next season. Some major factors here. Starting with the squad, the squad last season. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Sorry, if you absolutely categorically look at the season before last season, you will see that Liverpool absolutely went all guns blazing out for the quadruple. With the way we play, you've got to remember the way we play. Physically and absolutely drained they must have been going into pre-season last season. 63 games played, more than any single team can play. Every single fixture the computer would put out for you that's possible was completed, right? The way we play and the maximum amount of games were played. Right, then we go into the next season. We only signed one player, more or less. Uh, well, one, one midfield player, and that was Arthur Mello. That cost us, because we kind of thought we'd be all right with the midfield we had but that counters into what I'm saying now in, in regards to they were cream cracking then add this to it we then go on absolutely gruelling pre-season tour right I think we played Manchester United in America didn't we we got beat quite heavily by Manchester United if I'm right I'm, I'm sure it was that pre-season Klopp has put that right this pre-season there is no trips to America there's a quick trip to Thailand or Singapore, I think, and then it's Germany where Klopp has picked for us to have our pre-season. Then go into the fact that we then have injury after injury after injury after injury. I think it was Virgil, then Henderson, then Fabinho, I think they all had a go. Then we lose Diego Jota, who was in the form of his life for months, absolute months. Then we lose Luis Diaz, for nearly half a year, five months he was out, Luis Diaz. Then the rest of them dropped like flies. Naby Keita, when he was fit, he was more or less injured. When he was injured, he was injured. Then, at the fact, we then had a, for the first time ever in history of football, we had a mid-season World Cup. Add all these factors together, lack of midfield depth, which we have admitted was a mistake, which we are putting right this transfer window. Then counter in the fact that we played every single game possible, right? Every single game you could play in football, we played. Then counter in the fact that we kind of had a small squad, really. We couldn't rotate. Mostly the best players, our best 11 played nearly all the time. Mix all that together, what, you, what you'll what you see is you'll see what's called a burnout, an absolute burnout. Now, the media will tell you that was Liverpool coming to their end. The media will tell you that we're, we're finished. The media was telling you it's Klopp's seventh season and this is what happens. It happened at Dortmund, blah, blah, blah. It happened at Mike, blah, 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 right? 
yes, it was the end of a cycle for players like James Milner, for players like Bobby. From well, I think for me, I could have stayed another couple of years, but it certainly was for Sadio Mane. It certainly was time to change in areas of the pitch, which is what we've done. But what I look into is this: this team nearly won the quadruple, right? This team nearly won the quadruple, right? Uh, and then if you add the fact that we signed Cody Gakpo in January, if we'd have had Cody Gakpo from the start of the season, with a pre-season behind him, we would have finished top four because he was really starting to score goals. He was really starting to connect in the Bobby Firmino role. If we had, I, mean, I, I generally believe this, if Trent would have played the role that he played for the last 12 games, right, at the start of the season, when we were suffering and playing Navi Keita, if Trent would have played in them position, again, we would have got top four. So what do we do? We look at last season or the season before and we realise that it can't happen again. Now, I'm really relaxed when we, with regards to transfers. I'm actually quite pleased we've got Alex, Alexis McAllister already in the back. A lot of our fan base, their heads are falling off. Their heads are completely falling off. And that's because they want signing, 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 back to back, all in a row, all like football manager, like you click the, the buy button and, and it's job done. It doesn't work like that. Four of our targets are at the European Under-21 Championships. Four of them, right? So you've got Tarant and Kone for France, Gabriel Vega for Spain, and you've got uh, you've got a Graven Birch for Holland. They're all away with their national teams. So what you've got there is four targets. Then you've got to look at it like this: Tushimi. Tushimi is a, there's a concrete, real interest in Tushimi. We've apparently bid 50, 58 million, 60 million, but Real Madrid wants want close to 80 million euros, right? This could happen. This could seriously happen. Saudi Arabia at the moment has gone absolutely bonkers. Saudi Arabia could easily slap in a 20 million pound bid for Thiago. That 20 million would go towards a Tushimi and we would go out and buy him. I actually believe that. Or Nico Barella. I think we're 20 million off getting Barella or Tushimi. Right, so and a player sale will go towards that budget for that. The two others, I categorically believe we will sign two out of the three. And this is the three I'm going to give you. Sorry, three out of four, not two out of three. Graham Birch, Turan, and McAllister will be the three we bring in the midfield. I think, sorry, two out of four. I think that we've got two plan A's and two plan B's, if you get what I mean, because of different positions. Graham Birch, or Turan, or Vega, and Kone. It's, it's going to be one or the other, one or the other on both of them. Now I'm going to go into the reason why I think we can win the league next season. Major reasons. Last season, Manchester City's best player on the pitch every week, more or less, was Ike Gundogan. He's just joined Barcelona, so they've lost one of their best players. Coupled by the fact that Kyle Walker's out of contract, coupled by the fact that they've now just lost Bernard Silva to the Middle East, right? So, to Saudi Arabia. So Man City have now got to go out and get some players, you know, to replace legends. And I mean complete, colossus, title winning, European Cup winning legends, right? That takes time. I believe if Liverpool start the season the way they ended the last one and go and win 9 out of 10 games or 10 out of 11 or 12 out of 14, I generally believe we could, have put, we could pull away like we did in the, in, in the 2000 uh, league title win. We pulled away to the point where Man City gave up because it was impossible to catch us, right? Why do I believe we can win the league? Here's my major reasons. One, we're the only team apart from Man City that has done recently, so we already know how to win leagues. We already know how to withstand the pressure, and we already know how to get the job done. Two, We've lost two league titles to Manchester City by a point. So in a way, Aston Villa hold that 2-0 lead at Man City. Then, you know, we've won two league titles. So again, we were so close. So we were a whisker away. When you're losing league titles by a point, 
in my my opinion, you're a champion anyway, because it really is the throw of the dice when it comes down to a point. I mean, come on. Then you've got to think of it like this. Darwin Nunes, first season at Benfica, eight goals. Darwin Nunes, second goal again okay, season at Benfica, 30 plus, right? He's going to come again, right? Then you've got Gakpo, pre-season under his belt. He's going to come again. So you can add another 10, 15 goals to what we didn't get last season, right? Then you've got to think of this. A fully fit Luis Diaz. He is outstanding. Scored against Germany midweek. He's, and, and he was absolutely unbelievable against Iraq. All right, it's Iraq. I don't care. He looks back to his fully fit best. Then you've got the fact that we've got Alexis McAllister, a World Cup winner now that will drop into the pivotal three in midfield. I mean, think of this. For, for Chelsea, first game of the season, our midfield three could be Fabinho, McAllister, and uh, say it could either be Henderson. We could have a nice holding two of, you know, holding two of Henderson and Fabinho, or Henderson and Thiago, or Fabinho and Thiago with McAllister there or we could go Trent, Fabinho and McAllister you know two attackers with one pivotal I'm just saying the options are growing and growing and growing throw into the fact we've got Harvey Elliott, Curtis Jones uh, and obviously we're going to sign two, two or two more midfielders up front think of the options Ben Doak will break through this season he is Mohamed Salah's backup and do you know why I know that I speak to a lot of people at the club and they have told me that Liverpool are not even identifying a right-sided attacker to replace Salah because Ben Doak is that right-sided attacker. He will not go out on loan, he will play. And he'll play a lot of games next season because of the Europa League and because of the Carabao Cup. He'll play every game in that. You can probably categorically say that Ben Doak next season will make 10 to 15 to 20 appearances in all comps, in my opinion, depending on how far we go in the domestic courts. So, my, my confidence is we can win the league next season. I have already backed us to do it, and I just think what's going to happen is, Chelsea have got to get used to Pochettino, to the way that he wants to play, and they've got to do this. Man United are just, they're not getting any of their top targets. And Man United, by the way, aren't as good as people think they are. That season, the only reason they finished top four is because Chelsea and Liverpool just had the worst seasons they've ever had. And if it had been an extra four or five games in the Premier League, we would pick Man United to, to top four, in my opinion. So, they're not going to be a worry Man United, I don't think, for winning the league. They're nowhere near our level. We proved that when we battled them 7-0. I will be going to comments soon. I just want to finish this video I'm doing. And then I just look at the team like this. Like, if I close my eyes now, I think, right, Chelsea, pick your 11 and I'll go, right, in goal, Alisson Becker, uh, Trent right back, inverted, right, then you've got Canate, Van Dijk, Robbo, midfield three, this is what I'd play for Chelsea, Fabinho, Thiago, McAllister, or Fabinho, Henderson, McAllister, it'd be one of them pivotal three. Thiago is more or less a luxury player we could bring on to keep the ball or try and get as a goal if, if we're losing by that. I think we'll go for two sort of battlers and let McAllister have a free sort of role in the midfield. Uh, and then obviously you've got Trent that can dip in there as well. And then you could get Henderson or Fabinho to just drop back into right back if, if Trent's up. So it can work in so many different ways. But then what excites me is the front three. We now have a fully fit and firing Diego Jota. We now have a fully fit and firing Luis Diaz. We now have Mohamed Salah and we have Nunes and Gapo. The front three is going to be outstanding regardless of what ones we pick. We could go, you know, Diaz, Nunes, Salah, or we could go Gapo, Nunes, Doak, or Salah, Gapo. Nunes or Diaz, Jota. I mean, there's so many options we can have for, uh, based on whatever game we're playing. So look at that. Trent is, without doubt, one of the best midfielders in the world, and we have him, right? So he will be utilised in midfield. If we go and sign a right back like Pavard, or we go and get this Van der Ven, 
then it's going to be quite possible that the midfield three next season could be like a Fabinho, McAllister and Trent, you know, something like that. And then you use the Hendersons to rotate the squad and stuff like that because of their age. We go and get Taram, it could be Taram, Fabinho. The reason why I keep putting Fabinho in is because Fabinho, yes, he had a bad three quarters of last season, but he is one of the best DMs in the world when he's fit and firing. And I just think that after a really good rest, you know, no World Cups, no, they'll go away with their families. I generally believe that we're going to come back and we're going to, and do you know what? What a season we could have. We will go into the Europa League as favourites and go all out to win it. And here's another factor why I think we can win the league. Anfield, Anfield, next season, will be 61,000, an extra 7,000 seats, right? That is going to make a huge, huge difference. I'm telling you, you will, that, the video that that builder did before he got sacked, right, which was, I felt sorry for him, but even, either way, that new away end looks like the Dortmund end. You know, the, the end that Dortmund have behind their gold steep. I mean, it looks like you're going to have you know, sort of like one hell of a noise coming out the Anfield Road end. I can't wait to see it in full flow. And 61,000 next season, Anfield's going to be even more intimidating. And I didn't realise this until I watched the video of FSG's module for building the stadium. Do you know the stands that they build are designed to keep sound in? It's literally stands that make the stadium support and anger and and support and noise all cocooning into Anfield because of the design of the roof it's designed to keep this you know the sound in so it's going to be incredible it really is and I'm so so looking forward to next season I'm just going to get to the comments because you know I actually do really believe that we're going to have a special season next year and I'm sure you, you do as well so I'm just going to get to the comments quickly Right, here we are. So, Tony General Croft, hi mate, how you doing? I hope you're well. Hello, Sam Edwards, hi mate, how are you doing, mate? We'll never walk alone. Evening, George uh, Hayes, how you doing, pal? Hope, you, hope you're good. Peter McDougall, all right, bud, hope you're well. I'm doing really fine, thanks, mate. Stephen Lambert, evening, mate, I'm behind you, especially with cities clean, clearing. What about the rumours of Kyle Walker floating around? Well, I heard, Stephen, that Kyle Walker was wanting to go back to his hometown club, Sheffield United, and literally probably captain them and, you know, he could play there for another three or four years. So, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I can see him going there to Sheffield United. He's actually said it. He's actually said he wants to end his career back at Sheffield United. So, you know, he's, they're back in the Premier League and it's something I can really see. Uh, I mean, it's like James Milner. I thought he would go to Leeds and, and, you know, especially with them being relegated, but he is chasing Gareth Barry's record down for most Prem appearances. So yeah, unbelievable. George Hayes, uh, just going for the rest of the comments, uh, saying, was it in Singapore when Man United beat us? I remember them winning the worst looking trophy in the world. Yeah, the Lego trophy. I think it was, uh, yeah, I think it was in Singapore. It was that, that stupid Premier League Cup. Evening John Middleton, I hope you're well. Uh, Stephen Peacock, uh, everything, Neil, yeah, cheers. George Wilson Hayes, oh, it's been that close close it goes down to referees decisions going against you yeah, it has been that uh, Andrew Smith Diego Jota Andrew Smith Thiago well you know like I say there's a lot of belief in in, in this squad because I just wouldn't write the, the squad off yet and I think that if we can just sign two or three more players added to a World Cup winner that's already coming in added to the fact we've got some special kids coming through we've got Tyler Morton returning as well uh, you know, we've got a great youth academy, we've got some outstanding prospects coming through. Ben Doak's going to be one of the best young players in the world. In my opinion, that kid's going to be worth 100 million in five years. I honestly believe that. I have, I have never in my entire life ever seen a footballer like him. He, honestly, he, he's the most direct football player that I have ever seen in my life. And he is rapid. He reminds me of King Kladzi and McManaman but with pace, right? He is just lightning, lightning. And his ball control is like Suarez. When he runs with a ball, his ball's glued to him. 
And I just honestly believe that we might have just snipped from Celtic, probably one of the best kids. Football manager, for those that play it, look at Ben Ben Doak's uh, potential on that. He is literally one of the best youngsters in the world. And we have him, and we got him for 600,000. So honestly, and Bashitic as well, I forgot to mention him. Another kid that's going to be outstanding in the midfield. I am going to put, make a promise right now to every single supporter that's watching this video and on this group and on YouTube when I upload it in the next five, ten minutes, right? We will win trophies next season, at least one. I am adamant that Europa League, we will win. Adamant, because we're just too good for that competition. Not like Man United. Man United, everybody thought they were going to win it. But Man United had the worst away record in the Premier League or up there, if I think, along with ours. But we had a bad season. This is one of the best they've ever had. And I honestly believe that we'll storm the group. And once we get into the knockouts, we've got two legs, two legs to beat Europa League teams with the quality of players that we have. And by the way, don't turn your nose up to the Europa League next season because that is guaranteed Champions League football for next season if we win it, right? And also, it's a European trophy which gets us into the Super Cup final for the following season, which would be another hell of a night out and another sort of trophy we can win. And also, right, it's the only trophy Klopp has not won. And he'll want to put it right in Seville in 216. He'll want to put that right. And I was at the Dortmund game and, you know, that campaign should have won as a trophy at the end of it. So we'll put that right. So I think we'll win that. I think we can win a domestic cup, the FA Cup, League Cup, and we can go all out for the league. Because what I think we're going to have this season is a squad that can compete on all fronts. I really do. And Klopp started to take, uh, since we won the league, he started to take domestic cups, you know, a lot more serious now, which is brilliant. So honestly, I believe that Liverpool are back. And I'm sure you do too. So I'm just going to ask you all to do me one big favour. I need a thousand subscribers to start making my channel big on YouTube. It's free. So can you please click the link in the comments to this video or go on YouTube now whilst you're live on your phone or doing what you're doing and just subscribe to DTV TV. Make sure you get the right one because there's two of them. The old one I couldn't get the password for. It's, you'll see the videos of Legacy and you'll see the background and field on the videos. These are my new, new videos. So can you subscribe to free, keep sharing the group. That's another thing I'm going to say. We've grown by 6,000 members in the last 60 days, which is incredible. And obviously, if they get any idiots, I'll get rid of them. So I'm just going to see if there's any more comments. This is not coming through now, which is brilliant. Let me know your thoughts on this video. But I'm going to categorically say this. I believe we can win the league next season, and I've already backed us to do it. You'll never walk away.